All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Nature's Always Right, where we're going to get into dumping your own homemade liquid fertilizers or your liquid IMOs from KNF in a gravity based system that's in the most inexpensive system that I can think of because I'm trying to scale up my Jadam and KNF and feed my field fertilizers that I made myself for essentially zero cost. So this is the solution that we can use all around the world as these synthetic fertilizer costs go up. These are things that are applicable at any scale. Be sure to check out Yong Song Cho's book, Jadam Organic Farming, down in the description if you guys want to learn more about some of this topic that we're getting into today. So unfortunately this ramp, I can't just take it off by punching the hinges out. It's all welded together. Okay, this is a cheap tractor supply trailer I got off Facebook Marketplace. Um, I'm not too worried about a hole here. The structural integrity would be great if I'm ever driving anything onto this like my mower, so it's all good. But check yours, maybe you can take the hinges out and then you don't have to modify it. But I am gonna make a decently big size hole here because just in case this thing shifts around while I'm driving it, it won't slam my uh, pipes into this and possibly break. So if you wanted to be extremely careful, see how far the, the IBC can, can shift and cut that whole thing out. But, oh, look guys, I also need to be able to pull this, right? So I need to go up a bit higher. I'm gonna take a little bit more off the bottom too. Give my hands a little bit more room. And then I can take a file in here or my grinding wheel with um, the steel uh, brush on there and then that can clean up these edges so you don't rip your hand apart. This is using construction to make straight lines. Because this is a circle, I can basically line it up and have it be a pretty darn straight line very easily. So if I had a second person, this would be easier. And if you look at it, it's basically a straight line. So now I'm going to cut it in half. I wish I could cut through the whole thing, but I think it's just going to be a lot easier and easier to clamp down uh, if I'm working with half the pipe at a time. So I'm going to go on top and this is going to help remind me to stop and not cut all the way through. I want to leave this end where I'm going to put the cap on. Uh, I'm going to leave it alone and not cut through it so the structure stays stronger. So I'm going to start right there, just enough for the cap. So now I got my nice line. It's look how thin that is. Okay, this is gonna put out a nice drip. So at least for this part of the prototype. And then the last thing that we're gonna have to do, obviously, is support this boom uh, onto this. And we'll just do that with some simple straps for now. Um, it's gonna have a lot of wiggle. So we wanna try, try to take that wiggle out. We might even kinda pin it back a little bit. So this is one of the issues that I thought would happen with PVC. Um, obviously if we went, we went shorter, it'd be less, but the wider boom we have, the less driving we're going to have to do and the more water we can put out. But is the length of the hole not going to allow the water to completely fill the pipe and go down? And these are the things I don't know yet because I haven't tried it. And then we will adjust from there. Maybe with shorter pipes, we may have to do the thing where we just drill holes in the bottom of this to acquire enough of the pressure. One thing I'm thinking right now, I'm sure you're seeing it too, the wobble that it's going to put into this. So I think I could just put like a, a piece of wood under this and bolt it in so that it'll sit on top of the wood. I just have to get the right height. Um, and that should take all the wobble out of this thing and I can bolt it into the metal. So I took a two by four, cut it to length long ways, right? <clears throat> I cut it in half. Okay, that's great, but I need to take off a couple millimeters. So I just found a, one of the pieces that I cut off. It's actually the perfect height. So slide it in and now I can put it all the way in. And if I look at it, it's taking out the sag and now it can't, it can't really bump. Look at that. It's not too bad. So it'll be really important that I pre-drill this. Otherwise the wood will definitely split. Just throwing these screws in so that I can make sure I line it up with those pre-drilled holes. There. All right, so now I got it fully flushed. So it actually worked out. There's a hole right at the bottom of the IBC. So 
We're gonna go right into that. Boom. Now we got it locked on. You'll notice that um, I'm not gluing any of this together because it's gonna be such low pressure. I don't think that it'll be necessary. And if we have a small leak, who cares? We're just dripping it out onto the field, but we'll see what happens. It's kind of fun, these orange straps I got from the guy I bought these IBC totes from, so it's quite fitting. We'll try a slip knot on there. The one issue with straps is that it might slide around on me, so let's see. To make a simple slip knot, <clears throat> Take your rope, make a loop, make a knot on the loop, onto the main part of the, the rope there. Tighten that square knot down. Okay, now you have yourself a little loop there. Run it through, and now this can tighten, right? So that's a really good knot to know. I only know a few, and then that's a really useful one. Now if this slips, I already came up with an idea in my head. If I just screw a, put a screw into this right there, it won't be able to slide. We don't want it to be leaning on one side or the other because uh, we want it, the, all the pressure to be distributed evenly. So there's an argument, guys, for gluing this piece on because if it's permanently on there, it won't be able to do this at all. And then all we have to deal with is the wobble left and right. But let's use a level and we can tie this off and then we can just go drive around. We'll do a big loop and come back and drive right here and then see kind of what happened and then adjust from there and plus I'm probably gonna have to throw in those bolt, the screws I talked about. Okay guys, here's my strap set up. I've got a 2,000 pound strap on top, super tight pulling down and then these are two 500 straps going, pulling this way. Obviously it can't slide off the back and uh, you know, if I had some bigger straps, I would use those for sure, but I think that this is going to be enough. So as I suspected, these straps moved, right? So we gotta lock the straps down. Here's one of the advantages of just doing that slip knot, the slip knot I showed you, I can just slide it right off. And now let's go ahead and we'll do our PVC glue. We're gonna prime the inside, the outside of our pipe here. This gets off all the crap so that the glue really sticks well. Okay, I'm gonna, you can't see this, but I'm priming the inside of the other hole. Here's our PVC glue. Okay, this is the brown stuff. The brown is just for schedule 40, but you know, if you're like me, it's mostly what you work with. Let the excess drip off, coat the inside, get a bunch on the outside, and we'll shove it on in. We're gonna shove it in and then hold it at level. Put glue on the inside. And on the outside here, shove her in, and then get my level on here. We're not going to worry about our arms because they're bending. We want so the most important thing is to get it level at our center. So something else I'm going to do just to help reinforce it, I'm going to add PVC glue on the outside and let it just drip around. Before I go drive this around and have it bounce around all crazy. Um, I think I'll go eat breakfast, wait an hour, and then we'll come back, get our straps on here, get it, get it in position, and then we'll go do our first drop of fertilizer. So let's throw the screw through that'll hold our straps. This is a two and a half. So we'll have about a half inch on either side. That'll be more than enough. And I'm gonna, rather than going from the top, I'm gonna go from the side so I don't interact with the bottom slit. You know, I could just put galvanized wire through this. I mean, there's different options I could do, right? She's what you got. Boom, just like that. I'll do the other side real quick. I should measure the boom on the outside. Down, 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 down. Right there. Tie her off. Now something else I thought about, guys. When I'm driving down to my field, 
I have to go through fences and stuff. I don't really want this to, this is a 10 foot span. So actually what I'll do is pull this out um, and then just set it up here. And my slip knot will be at that same length. So everything should stay out how it is, I'm thinking. Oh no. Crap. I screwed up. I think glue might have got in here. You gotta be kidding me. Yep. A little bit of glue. So careful guys, don't um when you saw me level this out, be sure these are removed. This one wasn't really glued. Good. Okay. So now I've got removable boom arms. Now we're free to drive down and now we're gonna put in our JLF and add our water. Okay guys, this is my JLF right here that I've been making for many months now. So if you, you should go back and watch the soil test with uh, Earth Grower and we went an hour and a half video going deep on natural farming and looking at your soil test results. Okay, so this fertilizer is a combination fertilizer of everything that my field needs. I'm not gonna explain it in this video. These other ones are mostly just hay, chicken manure, and sheep manure, so very strong nitrogen. This has nitrogen plus everything, so I'm mainly gonna be using this one today. I have a couple of these cheap siphons to see if how well these would work to pump into my bucket. You know, this smells awful and I don't wanna get it on me if I can avoid it. I even brought gloves because I'm touching a camera and I'd rather not have my camera smell like absolute crap. So I don't know if you can hear on camera, but thunder's just going off. We're gonna have a thunderstorm around four, four o'clock. This ground has been extremely dry for the last week. We've been at high 90s with no rain and I cut the hay, which is amazing because that the dryness is actually what kills the parasites, which prey on my sheep more than any other uh, factor, better than cold and all, any of that. So. I'm hoping that the parasite load in this field has just dropped considerably. Now we're gonna come in with the fertilizers um, on that dry ground and then have the rain come in. I'll be coming out here um, and applying limo and another round of fertilizer as well, maybe in another week. So I'll do the limo in like two days or something. My timings aren't perfect, um, but it doesn't really matter. It's all gonna be effective. Let's see how well this works. So this one you like pump it. It worked pumping action you just saw me do, created that. Basically, I just wanna figure out how strong this is and I learned how to do this from Microbes by Marco. So this is off the charts, it's like a six point, over 6.0 on the EC. This is gonna be extremely strong, guys, from what I put in here. This is an EC meter, it's using hydro growing and um, kinda, it just basically measures the uh, electrical current that can go through the particles, the salts in the water and that's what it's measuring. Okay, now Marco, for his like seedlings, he was trying to get a two, between a two and 2.4 EC. So I'm gonna do a 2.0 total EC once we put it into my big IBC tote over there. Okay, so I'm gonna kinda do some quick math to figure this out. So now I'm just gonna add raw water into this. Now, I could just use Young Song's uh, ratios, but his, so, I could do like a one to 100 ratio. I guess what he says, I believe, for a very strong concentration of JLF. Um, but since I have this cool tool, why not dial it in uh, to something that my friend says doesn't burn plants? So that's basically what we're gonna do. Okay, so I'm just gonna go dump this in raw into my IBC toe and then come back. And we'll, this time we'll just do an inch of my JLF and add water until we can try to get that, that 2.0. And this is just gonna, it's just, just, I'm just doing this to get a rough idea of how strong this stuff is. Now, ultimately though, I'm gonna just add JLF into that and fill up water and look for that 2.0 on here once it's stirred up inside of the big IBC. We've got a paint strainer, fine mesh, and then a thick mesh. Probably don't even need that. Let's see how much this overflows or what happens. The fine metal and then the paint strainer caught all that. Okay, so that's, that filter system is going to work great. That's pretty darn good. And then I made sure I pulled all the slack really hard so that as we're bouncing around, we're not going to lose it. So let's talk about a couple other design ideas, guys. And I need your help down in the comments, right? 
very few people, I haven't even looked this up if anybody's ever done this before. So this is a good, probably 14 to 16 inches off the ground, but, and I think it'll be okay on my field, but if you had a bit of a steep incline, these booms are gonna hit the ground and, and I may have an issue with that. I'll have to be careful. Uh, maybe I can't go to the steepest part of where my hill is over here and I'll, I might have an issue. I don't know, we'll find out about that. If that's the case, then what I'm thinking is take a bunch of cinder blocks and put that all underneath the IBC and lift it up. Uh, and then strap it all down just like this. I, I don't think that would be an issue at all. That will also give me a bit more lift or I could um, strap wood across the, uh, the top of the trailer to get it higher. And um, if I wanted um, where, the, where the pipe is coming out, I could have it down, have it coming down and give it a little bit more gravity while raising it up a bit. Uh, and that might give me more pressure that I need. And the other possible problem is that slit design. This may not be a good design. I did that design because it's so easy. It took me two minutes to cut the slits. If I wanna drill in a bunch of holes, that was gonna take me forever. So this is why I wanted to try this design first. But I know that the hole design will for sure work. Um, it's just a matter of figuring out what hole size at gravity will work really well. And that slit also, it also wasn't perfectly straight and there's a little bit of variance in the width. So those are all their possible problems, which is why the drill would be perfect, you know, every time essentially. You know, I asked Chris Trump, how do I scale up Limo or, or JLF? And he's like, you just gotta figure it out with what you have. So that's what we're doing. And the, the method that I'm showing you guys, I can't really think of a more inexpensive way or a way that would be more universal all around the world, whether you're in Africa or India, everybody has these IBC toasts, everybody has PVC, everybody has a strap and screws and wood so that's the other reason i wanted to create this video and keep working on this method rather than going out and buying a pressurized sprayer and doing all that stuff because if you're just doing soil drench why not use gravity so i hope that this is really helpful for you guys be sure please hit the like button share this in all your knf groups help me get more views on this video so you guys will encourage me to do more stuff on this this is pretty niche pretty nerdy a lot of people probably aren't gonna be that interested in this video. So, you know, I won't really make money on this video. I'm doing it because I love it and I wanna help you guys. So uh, help me out by just sharing the video for me. All right guys, so I had to stop filling it because the trailer's lifting up the back of my truck. The tires, there's way too much weight on these tires. I forgot how much weight, this thing can only hold like a thousand pounds on it. Okay, I'm limited by this tiny, tiny trailer that I have. And I also have a four cylinder tiny truck. So we're gonna have to stop there uh, to prevent any damage okay we're at 0.6 we're guessing i don't know 150 gallons right here that's that's uh 1250 pounds 566 kilograms so we're absolutely maxing this trailer out so there's a huge limiting factor for me but that's okay because i can come back and fill it up and then we go out again here we go so now we're going to unleash some of this let's see what happens Woo! oh that looks good huh guys look at that and we're staying balanced. Yes, it works. So the slit looks like it's gonna work. Now, there's a lot coming out of here, guys. So maybe, so now let's say you have a tractor and a thousand gallon tank and you hook it up to something like this. Now that makes a lot of sense. But for me on this, um, I can only do about a hundred gallons in this tank. I think that drilling the holes and doing a, dripping a smaller amount at a stronger concentration and doing it at the same time during a rain or right before a rain and let the rain dilute the more concentrated fertilizer. That way I don't have to do all these trips and drive around on my field a million times. Okay, so that's where I'm gonna leave it at for now as the explanation of what to do. And I'm gonna keep dialing this in by myself, figuring this out and then um, be sure to sign up for my email list down below guys. I, d I haven't sent an email out in months. I promise I will not spam you, but when I put out my courses on KNF chickens, on Jadom and KNF, how to do all the inputs, how to scale up and do things like this, I will let you know when those come out so you can get in there, take the course, and also be a part of the community where we can help each other ask questions. I'll be in there answering your questions and helping you to do this yourself and save you a ton of money, do everything beyond organic, and we can change agriculture with systems like this.
And then I, the other thing I'm going to test is going across my field. There's a little dip. I'm going to go slowly <clears throat> and see if I bottom out or hit stuff. When you're designing stuff, I think that the best thing to do is start with a basic um, design and then keep modifying, modifying on top of it. Don't start with the most complex design first because then it's harder to take away aspects rather than, than build onto it. So let's test our um, strength. We're at 1.0. Okay, so I'm going to add in more. Okay guys, we finally got up to 2.0. Wow, that worked way better than expected. I actually ended up having to open the valve all the way and that made the flow much better. And I did maybe a quarter of the field. So if I did that four times, that's not that crazy. Um, so 400 gallons, something like that is where I'll end up. We'll see the response of the field, but I don't even know if I'm gonna drill the holes other than to um, just show another example. But uh, I'll work on that for another video. Maybe one other little adjustment I could make is Maybe not make the boom so wide, bring them in a foot on each side and that would make it a little bit more even flow. So I may adjust them in that respect. Um, but other than that, for this small little setup here, that worked really, really well. So the volume that was dumped at a time I really liked, especially when I'm about to get rain. So stay tuned guys, I'll be doing a lot more stuff about this in the future. I'll be working on a lot of my, these course things during this winter and then they'll come out in spring and then we'll get to do Canuff spring, summer and fall together next year.